welcome to online classes devo nalgonda i am your chitaluri satyanarayana working at tsms dindi today i am going to teach the lesson reading a third unit of ninth class with the title swami is expel from school swami is expel from school so before getting to the lesson here let us have a glance at a face sheet with the title school life this is the face sheet with the title school life so as i have shown you just now here is a picture and below that picture two questions are asked the first question goes on like this do you approve of the action of the teacher as depicted in the picture give at least one reason for your opinion so this is a question so what does he ask here do you approve of the action of the teacher as depicted in the picture yes here you might have noticed what is the action of the teacher in this picture the teacher is punishing a student right so punishing a punishment by the teacher is accepted in your opinion is it approved in your opinion that is a question here if you say that if you feel that it is accepted why the reason you should tell otherwise if you don't approve the action of the teacher in this picture you should say that no it should not be accepted so in my opinion i say that yes the action of the teacher in this face sheet should not be accepted in fact because punishment should not be encouraged in my opinion because punishing the child we cannot bring about the change in his or her mind so that's why punishment should not be encouraged so in my opinion i say that i don't approve the action of this teacher in this picture right that is my answer and uh, coming to second question can you suggest a few steps to correct the students causing nuisance yes generally we see that so the students will be creating certain nuisance in the classroom at the time to stop that nuisance to stop that indiscipline which is observed amongst the students in the class do you suggest a few steps to correct them that's what the question here yes we can we have to motivate these students and we have to make them realize uh, that they are doing something wrong and it should be corrected so in a, in an affection with with affection with an affection and love and in a friendly manner if we motivate the children and definitely the children will be motivated and they can understand what we are teaching them and uh, definitely i hope they would follow disciplinary actions and so has they can change their attitude so likewise uh, with affection and love and uh, with the uh, motivation we should give some motivation to the children's mind and we should make them realize what they are doing whether they are doing wrong or right we should make them realize in such a manner we can uh, uh, take steps uh, definitely there will be a change uh, observed among the students that's my opinion so later here oral discourse also is been given uh, for debate purpose uh, the title is punishment will help the students to learn so this is the topic here so whether the punishment is uh, uh helpful to the students to learn things or it's not helpful so the, it is debatable uh, uh topic here and uh, we can arrange the debate among the students also here and you can think uh, about a few things uh, for and against for this uh, title punishment will help the students to learn it is a debatable uh, topic here okay by this i conclude by saying this school life uh, phase sheet has been over coming to reading a in unit 3 with the title swami is expelled from school 
So Swami is expelled from school. Expel. What is the meaning of expel here? Removed. Swami is removed from school. Who was Swami? Why was he removed from the school? Why was he expelled from the school? So when we get into this lesson, we come to know all those uh, things. Before getting to the lesson, I would, uh, we had better know a few things about the order of this lesson. The order of this lesson is R.K. Narayan. R.K. Narayan. So R.K. Narayan uh, uh, was uh, in the period of uh, 10th October 1906 to 13th May 2001. He was alive. And uh, actually, the name R.K. Narayan is a shortened from Rasipuram Krishna Swami Ayer Narayana Swami. Rasipuram Krishna Swami Ayer Narayana Swami is the uh, full name of uh, R.K. Narayan. So, R.K. Narayan is a short form. Okay. And uh, R.K. Narayan was uh, an Indian author, so one of the famous authors of India. And uh, his works of fiction include a series of books about people and their interactions in an imagined town in India called Malgudi. So Malgudi is uh, a fictional village. A fictional village in the sense uh, it was the creation of uh, R.K. Narayan. Actually, the Malgudi, the village Malgudi does not exist. It is only the creation of a R.K. Noroyan. That's why it is called a, a fictional village. Malgudi uh, is a, a fictional village uh, which was created by our other R.K. Noroyan in his uh, fictions, right? So he is credited with bringing Indian literature in English to the rest of the world. Actually, he is credited with bringing Indian literature. Indian literature, in Indian literature, he has focused uh, mainly on our India's culture and rituals and uh, historical things uh, which are being observed in, in the society. So, mainly he has focused uh, uh, on these things, uh, particularly uh, on our Indian culture in his uh, write-ups. So, he has uh, written books, Swami and Friends, and The Bachelor of Arts, The English Teacher, and The Financial Expert. These are his popular works. The present extract is, particularly this is an extract, with the title Swami is expelled from school he is an extract. It was taken from R.K. Norwain's uh, a novel that is uh, uh, with the title Swami and Friends. Swami and Friends, actually, the novel written by R.K. Noroi. From that novel, this lesson with the title Swami is expelled from school uh, was a small uh, extract it is. Okay? Right? Coming to the point. And his narratives highlight social context and provide a feel for his characters through everyday life. Generally, in his narratives, we find that social context uh, social uh, society situations, the living styles of uh, uh, various people uh, in the society is very much focused on uh, R.K. Norwayne's uh, writings. And uh, generally we find his characters, uh, the characters which he created in his uh, uh, writings, generally we face them in uh, uh, the society. That's what he has been famous for. In a writing career that uh, spanned over 60 years, uh, Narayan received many awards and honors. Yes, he has re received many awards and honors in his uh, uh, writing, um, for his writings. And these include the A.C. Benson Medal from the Royal Society of Literature and the Padma Vibhushan. He also has won Padma Vibhushan, which is uh, India's second highest civilian award. India's second highest civilian award, Padma Vibhushan. That also R.K. Narayan has uh, uh, got that award and he was also nominated to the Rajya Sabha and the upper house of the Indian parliament for that also he has been uh, nominated to the Rajya Sabha also. So this is what uh, uh, about uh, uh, the author of this lesson uh, uh, R.K. Narayan. I hope you all understood well children and coming to the lesson Swami is expelled from school here. 
the head monster entered the close with a slightly flushed face and a hard ominous look in his eyes swami no then we should that he had been anywhere but there at that moment the head monster surveyed the close for a few minutes and asked are you not ashamed of coming and sitting there after what you did as to die just as a special honor to them he read out the names of a dozen students or so that had attended the uh, class after that he read out the names of those that had kept a while and asked them to stand on their benches he felt that punishment was not enough and asked them to stand on their desks swami nadin was among them and felt humiliated at that eminence then they were lectured when it was over they were asked to offer explanations one by one one said that he had an attack of a headache and therefore could not come to school school he was asked to bring a medical certificates actually this was a scene in this story here that was the time one fine morning that headmaster had that school entered the class and at the time his face was slightly flushed what is the meaning of flush here flushed means a red and a hot face the headmaster's face was a somewhat red in color and he looks so hot means he is with anger in his face right and there is a ominous look ominous ominous uh, uh, is there ominous uh, in the sense uh, suggesting that something bad is going to happen uh, he has a uh, an ominous look that ominous look describes that something bad is going to happen in the classroom at the time so uh, in that class uh, uh, one of the students name was uh, swami nadan swami nadan also kept silent there just he, he, he was uh, sitting there expecting something to happen at the time so for a few minutes a uh, few seconds uh, headmaster uh, surveyed the class he had uh, a glance he had looked at the students totally he had, he had observed the class there and after that just uh, he asked a question are you not ashamed of coming and sitting there after you did yesterday what you did yesterday are you not ashamed of sitting there are you not ashamed of coming and sitting there thinking as if nothing was happened what did you do yesterday likewise uh, addressing the students sir uh, he asked this uh, question so it is uh, just a special honor to them uh, he read out the names of a uh, uh, dozen students uh, who had attended the class today and uh, who were uh, who did not attend yesterday likewise just he was checking so meanwhile that he went on asking he went on uh, making an inquiry of their absence why a few students were absent yesterday why they did not attend the school yesterday likewise he inquired of the students uh, of their absence so just he, he went on asking uh, questions why did not they attend uh, the school yesterday the previous day and all likewise so as he asked these questions here what was the situation of swami nadan here swami nadan was among them and he was felt humiliated and humiliated at that eminence means he was in some bad mood and here the meaning eminence means the quality of being highly accomplished and respected actually it is a satire to use this word uh, he has uh, satirically the other had uh, told uh, this uh, uh, used this word here uh, though he looked uh, as if uh, he was uh, with a man of highly accomplished and respect but it is not like that but simply he was uh, looking like was swami nathan at the time then uh, the headmaster uh, uh, has given a lecture uh, in front of those students lecture on what why what was the reason for their absence why they did not attend the school yesterday why you are doing like this why you are uh, with this much of uh, indiscipline here what made you uh, for being away from the school why you are bunking like this so this is what discussing all these things uh, uh, the students were lectured by the headmaster here 
the headmaster has given a lecture to the students here when it is over the students were asking their explanation for their absence why why they were absent yesterday and all so when he went on asking the students there one student answered that uh, that he had an attack of a headache that's why he could not come to school so when he had answered like this later the students were asked to bring a medical certificate when that particular student told that man why you were absent yesterday why you did not attend class yesterday when headmaster asked him that the student replied that he had uh, an attack of headache that's why he could not come to school so for that headmaster asked him to bring a medical certificate and second one said that second one second student said that while he had been coming to school on the previous day someone had told him that there would not be there would be no school while he was coming to school on his way here uh, someone uh, told him that there would be no school at all so that's why he had gone back so that is the reason uh, second student uh, told see that the students are giving different different reasons in fact which are unbelievable to the mind of a uh, headmaster here so the headmaster replied that at the time if i was going to listen to every loafer who said there would be no school here you deserve to be flogged yes if you go on uh, listening uh, headmaster says here that if that particular student who told that he was he had gone back home as he was told by somebody on his way that there would be no school here at this answer headmaster told him that if you go on listening the suggestion or statement given by any loafer whom you come across on your way then definitely you will be flogged off you will be flogged off is used flog flog which means a beat with a stick if you go on believing such things and uh, being away from the school here uh, you go back to home here what nonsense that you are telling here for this definitely you will be flogged you will be flogged off you will be beaten with a stick that's what here headmaster uh, replied uh, to the student here but in a way he did not come to school and verify no there is no answer so later the punishment was pronounced if there is no answer from the student the punishment was pronounced here what is the punishment that was given by the or the atmosphere here 10 days attendance cancelled and 2 rupees fine and the whole day to be spent on the desk student has to spend the whole day on the desk and 10 days attendance was cancelled and 2 rupees fine was imposed right later again he asked it the third student the fifth and the third student said that he had an attack of uh, uh, headache all right the fourth said that fourth student said that he had stomach ache the fifth said that his grandmother died suddenly just he was starting for uh, school at that time the headmaster asked him that if he could bring a letter from his father certifying that his grandmother died at master asked then the reply from the student is he had no father the student has no had no father then who was his guardian likewise his grandmother but the grandmother was dead no was she not again he got doubt no it was another grandmother the headmaster asked it. no it was another grandmother died that's what the student replied here the headmaster then again asked that how many grandmothers would be there how many grandmothers a person could have headmaster raised his doubt still there is no answer at all could he bring a letter from uh, his neighbors no the student could not so this was the case here none of his neighbors could read or write because he lived in a very illiterate part of element street that particular student was living in a illiterate part of element street uh, there none of his neighbors could read and write so then the headmaster offered to send a teacher to this illiterate locality to ascertain to find out ascertain what is the meaning of ascertain the word ascertain here find out to ascertain to find out 
from the boys neighbors uh, take the confirm to take confirmation whether the boys neighbors if the death of the grandmother was a fact or the boy was telling a false make it confirm to take confirmation he sent a, one of his teachers to make an inquiry to ascertain to find out whether that particular boy's grandmother was died or not likewise but so a pause some perspiration perspiration means sweat sweating so here at some perspiration a pause some perspiration and then the answer that the neighbors could not possibly know anything about it when the inquiry was made the neighbors uh, uh, could not give any answer regarding uh, the student's uh, grandmother right as uh, such case was not at all there in that locality so because uh, uh, there there was no information no neighbors could give uh, any reply to this question the headmaster coming to know this uh, just he hit uh, the students on the knuckles with his uh, cane because he got angry because uh, uh, he, he realized that the child uh, had uh, lied uh, to him that's why he hit him uh, on his knuckles knuckles in the sense of uh, a part of a finger at a joint where the bone is near the surface see that these are the knuckles here see here the headmaster hit him, hit the boy and later he called him as a street dog he scolded him saying that uh, the student who lied was a, a street dog and uh, he pronounced the punishment 15 days suspension for that student student so as this was going on in the classroom there that was the time uh, swami nodan's uh, turn came when swami nodan's turn came here just he looked around helplessly and uh, rajam sat on the third bench in front and uh, resolutely he also looked away he was gazing at the blackboard intently at the time expecting what is going to happen and all like this so again the swami nodan was also asked by the uh, headmaster here the reason for his absence at the time swami nodan went on saying that uh, why did you keep away yesterday asked the headmaster looking up swami nodan sir first impulse was to protest that he had never been absent first impulse the first immediately what answer swami nodan had given there uh, he uh, pretended uh, that as if he protested even that he had never been absent first just he, uh, he, he he support he supported himself saying that he had never been absent to school at the time but the attendance register was there to check whether he was attended the school yesterday or not the attendance register speaks no it tells no so by that uh, headmaster came to know that and uh, for that reason yes attendant attendance register uh, speaks man whether you were absent yesterday or not why you are lying telling lies why you are lying so likewise again he asked his explanation and master asked swami nodan for his explanation at that time swami nodan uh, started telling certain things which are uh, uh, disjoint things unbelievable things there is no clear uh, uh, statement in his uh, uh telling here he says no no i was uh, stoned i tried to come but they took away my cap and burnt it no 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 i was stoned by somebody there uh, they took away my uh, cap and they burnt it and uh, many strong men held me down when i tried to come to school when a great man is sent to goal i am surprised to see you a slave of the englishman didn't they cut off dakka muslim slaves of slaves likewise no connection between his statements here just he went on telling this and that that and that in a um, skimmish manner almost uh, he was looking as if he was uh, in confusion state likewise he was uh, creating a uh, havoc uh, a lot of confusion in his sayings uh, they are uh, almost like uh, unbelievable things no connection in his statements one to another so likewise just he went on uh, telling a disjoint uh, things unbelievable things to the headmaster there 
So, likewise here, he had wanted to mention a headache, but he found to uh, his distress that others beside him had won. The headmaster shouted, won't you open your mouth? Likewise. Actually, like other students, Swaminathan also had wanted, uh, Swaminathan also wanted to say that, uh, that he had an attack of headache or stomachache or something. What other reasons given by that uh, other students? The same things he wanted to give, but actually when he found that, those reasons were already given by the by his fellow mates, uh, so they don't work. So that is the reason he had just he went on telling uh, all uh, uh, other things uh, which were no, uh, which had uh, no connection at all. So likewise, uh, just he went on telling this or that to the headmaster uh, as if he was in a confusion uh, uh, state. So after that, Swaminathan kept staring at the headmaster with tearful eyes. Masas. Uh, uh, meanwhile, what happened that? Won't you open your mouth uh, again? Tell me that what the correct reason, likewise, here the headmaster asked him. He brought the cane sharply down on Swami Nodan's right hand, right shoulder. So, immediately, headmaster got angry with anger, just he brought down his cane on Swami Nodan's uh, right hand, shoulder here, right shoulder. So, immediately, Swami Nodan kept staring at the headmaster with a tearful eyes. He was beaten by the headmaster, no? So that's why his eyes are with full of tears and he started massaging with his left uh, hand the spot where the cane was uh, uh, laid. I will kill you if you keep on staring without answering my question. Again the headmaster cried. Again the headmaster uh, shouted uh, saying like that, I will kill you if you don't come up with the correct explanation. Likewise, uh, headmaster again warned against uh, Swaminathan here. Yes, uh, again here, Swaminathan uh, at the cry of headmaster here, uh, when the headmaster shouted, uh, saying that uh, he is going to kill him uh, if he uh, is not with the correct explanation. So, I, I couldn't come, stammered Swaminathan. He said, so ask the headmaster and turning to a boy said, bring the peon. So, when that, what is that? You are not giving a proper answer for me, for my question. You are, you didn't, because here Swaminathan did not give proper explanation for his uh, absence to the school. So, that's why here, immediately headmaster called uh, the peon, attender of that school here. And uh, again, he made an inquiry about the pun here. Then the pun uh, told him that, yes, boy, yesterday I observed you that. Didn't you uh, break the window panes of our school here? Yes, I saw at the time. You are involved in breaking the window panes. I saw you that. Likewise, even the pun also answered. Even headmaster also, yes, I also observed that. I also have seen that you people broke the window panes, likewise he told. So now, as it was strongly believed that Swami Nodhan broke the window panes, right, mirrors, there was no chance of escape for Swami Nodhan now. So Swami Nodhan kept staring foolishly till he received another whack on the back, whack, whack uh, is a, a strong uh, a blow, a strong blow uh, with a, a cane, right? A strong blow with a cane, it is called whacking. So, as uh, uh, again Swamina then uh, kept uh, staring at uh, Edmoster here, suddenly there was uh, uh, another whack on the back of Swaminathan. Again, uh, uh, Edmoster had uh, bet him on his uh, back uh, with a cane, okay? And what the headmaster demanded what the Heng Brigand had to say about it. Heng Brigand, here the word Brigand uh, is used. A Brigand in the sense a member of a gang of bandits and thieves. A member of a, a gang of bandits and thieves is called a Brigand. So here in a satire, in a satirical way, it's a satire actually to call that Swami Nodan as a, a Brigand. Uh, it is a, a satire. Uh, in Edmaster's words, uh, uh, satirically that he has uh, used that word. It, it's a satire on a Swaminathan here, calling him as brigand. Yes, now the brigand had to say about it, like that again he asked Edmaster. 
but what about the situation of this brigand here he had no chance at all to say he had nothing to say at the time so it was a fact that swami nathan had broken the panes right so they had seen it likewise there is no chance to swami nathan to escape so there was nothing more to it so likewise he had unconsciously become defiant and did not care to deny the charge so he did not dare to deny the a charge which is going to be implemented on swami nathan by his headmaster there so when another whack came on his back again the headmaster uh, uh better the swami nathan on his back again uh, there was uh, another whack on his back so he ejaculated and immediately just he moved aside, uh, aside and uh, don't beat me sir it pains don't beat me sir it pains likewise swami nathan uh, uh, asked had master this was an invitation to the headmaster to bring down the cane four times again when swami nathan tried to stop the headmaster from his beating so this has given uh, one more chance to headmaster because he, he has got angry again uh, so that's why as he became furious uh, uh, again uh, this time uh, headmaster brought down the cane four times again four times again with the cane he bet the swami nathan headmaster bet the swami nathan four times more with his cane and uh, he said keep standing here on this desk staring like an idiot till i announce your dismissal yes so again headmaster warned swami nathan for his dismissal and until then he also warned him to stay uh, standing there on on that desk in his class and staring like an idiot uh, likewise he wanted it must have wanted him that he is going to uh, give him going to announce uh, uh, his dismissal as a punishment and until then also he wanted him to stay uh, on the desk there uh, staring like an idiot likewise it must have wanted swami nathan so every pore in swami nathan's body burnt with the touch of the cane so with the touch of the headmaster's cane as the headmaster bet him likewise here every pore of swami nathan's body burnt with the touch of the cane here he was some pain it is very painful for swami nathan because he was uh, uh, beaten black and blue by the headmaster okay likewise so he had a sudden flood of courage the courage that comes of a uh, desperation a uh, sudden courage meanwhile sudden courage swami nathan has got here Uh, here a word of desperation is used desperation in the sense of anxiety worry with a lot of worry and anxiety so suddenly he has got some courage swami nathan has got some courage and he uh, restrained the tears that were threatening to rush out tears from his eyes were threatening to rush out when they are about to rush out uh, his tears just he was restrained just he was uh, he wanted to uh, keep under control his tears so just uh, uh, restraining his tears uh, uh, just he jumped down and uh, grasping his books just he grasped his books from his bench from his desk and he rushed out uh, muttering that uh, he doesn't care uh, his school is dirty school so just he rushed out from the class uh, muttering that he doesn't care uh, his uh, dirty school he doesn't care the headmaster sir dirty school sir i don't like i don't uh, care for your dirty school likewise saying these things saying these words um, muttering these words swami nathan has uh, swami nathan uh, had rushed out uh, of his uh, classroom because uh, as it was very painful for him the beatings of headmaster here so just he got angry and muttering these words uh, as he doesn't care uh, at master school at uh, the t school just he made a comment and also he rushed out of the classroom there okay friends so this is uh, uh, the explanation for this uh, uh, swami is expelled from school uh, reading a i hope you all understood well uh, this lesson so please go through the lesson once on your own and uh, definitely you can uh, understand this lesson so easily and i hope until th till this time here you all must have understood very well okay friends right have a nice day this is your chitaluri satyanarayan
thank you one and all welcome to online classes tvo uh, nalgonda i am your chittaluri satyanarayan working at tsms dindi model school so today i am going to teach you a uh, reading b unit 3rd 9th class uh, it's a poem with the title not just a teacher but a friend not just a teacher but a friend this is the poem we are going to learn today okay so i render the poem first just you listen to me and after that i will explain not just a teacher but a friend i have no way to turn had no way to go this is just something i think you need to know i don't know what made me trust you i still remember the day when i told you what have been through i thought i should run away go hide in a hole but then you really brought out my true soul as each day grew longer our trust became stronger each time i wanted to cry you stayed there right by my side then i moved to the next grade boy was i afraid that our trust would slowly fade but i was wrong we are still strong so these are the three stanzas i read out let us see what is the meaning of these uh, stanzas here so here uh, a student uh, saying he is presenting his uh, feelings uh, as if he was uh, speaking to uh, a teacher here actually what is the meaning of very title of this poem here not just a teacher but a friend teacher is not only a teacher for the students he can also be a friend there was uh, a proverb teacher can be a friend a guide a philosopher like we see here teacher is not only confined to be as a teacher but he is also a friend to the student that is a very concept here means he can how friends can understand his fellow a uh, mates in the same manner teacher can understand the every aspect the every feeling of uh, his student here and he would go on suggesting uh, his students in a friendly manner as if uh, he was his uh, uh he was uh, their uh, friends likewise so let us see that how it can be uh, proved here that a hawaii teacher is uh, a teacher can also be a friend to the students so here a student uh, is addressing he is uh, uh, telling to his teacher i had no way to turn had no way to go sir i had no way to turn had no way to go even i don't know where to turn and where to go even i don't know that even i don't know where to move but this is just something i think you need to know so this is just something sir that you need to know i don't know what made my made me trust you so here the student says that i don't know what made me trust you why is student what made the student to trust his teacher he doesn't know that's what here student says with this line the author says with this line the poet says with this line actually the poet it is the anonymous uh, poem uh, the unknown poet poet is not known it is unfortunate to know that poet is not known who has written this beautiful poem right so in this line uh, stanza student feels that i don't know what made me trust you student addressing this teacher uh, saying that he doesn't know what made him to trust his teacher I still remember the day when I told you what I have been through. I still remember the day when I told you what I have been through. What I have been through means what I am here. What's my destination? Where should I go and where should I start my career? How should I start my career regarding all these things? The day where I don't know even where to go and where to turn, what to do and what not to do. 
at that time that day still i remember student says to his teacher i thought i should run away go hide in a hole when the first day of my school on the first day of my school really i don't like at the time really at the time i tried i i felt myself that i should run away from the place and go somewhere and hide somewhere in a hole so that's what i thought the first day of my school i was very much terrified to uh, come to school the student feels but then you really brought out my true soul then you really brought out my true soul means then really you guided me what what is the thing that i should do you made me realized you made me understand what is a reality and why should i attend the school likewise uh, mean here the student says that the teacher encouraged him a lot he made him realize the importance of attending school at the time that's what uh, he feels here as each day grew longer our trust became stronger so when the student started uh, coming to school as uh, days are going on and also he says that the student says to his teacher here that as each day grew longer our trust became stronger as the days go goes on like likewise they trust also they trust between them also is growing very stronger and stronger means uh, one to another uh, um, each, uh, each other uh, teacher and uh, student vice versa started uh, trusting each of them trusting each other yes likewise they they trust and their uh, faith uh, also has been uh, growing very stronger he says each time i wanted to cry you stayed there right by my side each time whenever the student wanted to cry every time the teacher he stayed uh, uh, right uh, by his side whenever the student uh, is in uh, uh, pain whenever the student is crying out of something at the time the teacher is there to console him that's what your student says yes whenever i wanted to cry whenever i feel pain you almost stayed right by my side consoling me helping me consoling me like my spirit student is telling then i moved to the next grade boy was i afraid and also student says here that when he moved to the upper grade as a boy he was afraid oh, how to complete this class this is a higher class how how can i finish this class whether uh, uh, i i would be paused in this whether i would uh, attend all the tasks of this class whether i could succeed in this class in passing in getting paused in this class whether i could succeed or not so the student uh, generally is uh, uh, full of doubts when he promoted to higher class in such case also he says that as a boy i was afraid Uh, when i moved to the next grade next class he says that our trust would slowly fade when i moved to the next class higher grade class and your student says that our trust would slowly fade 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 what is the meaning of fade something becoming paler something uh, becoming dull less bright so that time your student says that when he had uh, been promoted to higher grade when he entered higher class he says here that the trust between uh, uh, student and teacher here uh, would slowly uh, fade he says the trust would uh, fade slowly he says it would become dull the trust would become dull he says but i was strong we are still strong but i felt student says that he felt that the trust would slowly fade between himself and the teacher but in fact uh, later he realized that yes i was wrong but i was wrong we are still strong yes when i felt uh, when uh, student felt that uh, the trust between the teacher and uh, himself uh, would slowly fade later he realized that uh, he was wrong but still uh, they are uh, very strong in believing each other that's what uh, this stanza explains to us even though sometimes you don't have time you at least ask me if i am fine see what a beautiful lines here 
Even though sometimes you don't have time, sometimes teacher definitely would be busy. Even though when the teacher has been very busy in attending his, uh, uh, his job, uh, in attending his works, his tasks, you at least ask me if I am fine. Though you are very, very busy, teacher, but at least you would ask if I am fine. So a yes, student says that even though teacher is so busy with other things, with, with his uh, own things and whatever it may be that, in his job chart, though the teacher is very busy also, he feels that a teacher would ask him whether he is fine or not, whether he was fine or not. So teacher would make an inquiry of his uh, whereabouts, student's whereabouts. So that's what student feels here. Even though sometimes I am not, I feel like I have just been short. Even though sometimes I am not fine, I may feel that as if I have been, I have just been short. Sometimes I may not be uh, well, I may not be good. But I smile and say, yes, I am alright. But even at that time also a student feels that, I can say that, I smile. Simply a student says that he smiles and he says, yes, I am right. He, he says to himself that he is uh, right, he was right, he, he was fine. Then I walk away and you are out of sight. When he himself feels that, uh, smiles and feels himself that he was right, then simply again he says that he walks away and uh, you are out of sight, I'll just have to wait, I still have my fate. At the time, when the teacher is out of sight, when the teacher is not seen, teacher is nowhere at the time. When he, want, when he required to meet him, when he required teacher's presence also. At the time if the teacher has been out of sight, also he says that I will just have to wait, I still have my fate. At that time I will just have to wait. Student says that he, he would just have to wait there for, for uh, meeting teacher. And uh, I still have my fate. At the time I feel that it's my fate whether I am going to meet you or not. Whether I, I am going to meet you or not at the time. So that would be my fate, he says. But sometimes when, the, when he very much wanted to meet the teacher, even when the teacher has been out of sight at the time also, a student says that he would have to wait for some time to meet the teacher. And the fate decides whether he is going to meet his teacher and not likewise. Means he, he wanted the help of the teacher at the time here. Yeah. Yes, so that's what uh, this uh, stranger explains to us. I am so glad that you were there when I was sad. I am so glad that you were there when I was sad. And also here a student says that when he was sad, he feels so glad that teacher was there always with him. When he was in sad mood, the teacher was there always to console him, to encourage him, or to make him feel happy. So that's why a student say, says that he was so glad when he was sad, when the teacher was with him, when the teacher has been with him in his sad moment, to console him, the teacher was always with him. That's what, when the teacher was with him, he feels that he was so glad. And this is what makes you not just my ninth grade teacher, my friend. Yes. This is what makes you not just my ninth grade teacher, my friend. And also here a student says that, this is what makes the teacher not just his ninth grade teacher. This makes his teacher a friend to him. Yes, a friend in need is a friend indeed. That is a proverb in English. So likewise, at the need of the hour of the student, teacher can also be a friend to him because he not only confined to only for teaching, and also he, he makes an inquiry of a uh, uh, inquiry of a student uh, whether he would be happy or uh, whether he is uh, sad in all his sad moments also to console the student in a friendly manner teacher would always be with the student that's what here here student says that that is the thing here all these things where you always where you could be always my friend this makes you not just my ninth grade teacher, you are my friend teacher, you are my friend. So that's why not just a teacher, you are not just a teacher, but a friend to me. 
likewise your student says in this stanza so with this a student a relation between student and teacher a beautifully uh, has been uh, portrayed uh, in this uh, poem not just a teacher not just a teacher but a friend so who have to salute uh, to this to that poet uh, who had written this po poem in this beautiful manner and he has this poem beautifully depicted uh, the friendly relation between uh, a student and uh, a teacher okay friends i hope you all understood well this poem so please once you i request you go through this poem and uh, definitely your uh, uh, mind will be delighted uh, uh, by uh, reading this uh, poem and uh, understanding the concept of uh, this poem as i just uh, have uh, explained this to you all thank you friends thank you for listening patiently my lesson up to this time and uh, once again thank you one and all and uh, have a nice day this is uh, i am your chittaluri satyanarayan thank you have a nice day welcome to online classes devo nalgonda i am your chittaluri satyanarayan working at tsms dindi nalgonda district so dear children today i am going to teach you reading c in 9th class unit 3 with the title of this reading c is homework homework okay so coming to this lesson here homework the very term is very familiar to you all as you all know pretty well homework has historically been given to students to reinforce what they learn at school and ultimately to help them learn the material better however too much homework is not helpful and can be counterproductive excessive amounts of time spent on completing homework can take away the kid's social life family time and it limits it limits their participation in sports or other activities the amount of homework a teacher has to give to student should be restricted actually when we are supposed to uh, talk about uh, homework here historically homework has been given to students for what purpose the homework is given to the students here to reinforce which means to strengthen uh, what they learn at school generally what students had learned at school uh, to reinforce it to strengthen it homework is given this is a historical uh, procedure but ultimately it will help uh, students to learn the material better to get somewhat progress in learning the things which were taught in school uh, if they do homework uh, a little bit of their progress may be improved actually this is a, a factor of giving a homework to the students here but however one thing we should remember in this regard too much homework should not be entertained too much homework is not at all helpful to the students it can be counter productive here the word counter productive is used counter productive in the sense of having the opposite effect to the intended what effect that is intended what effect that is expected it will become reverse so too much homework not only it is helpful it's not at all helpful and it can be a counter productive it, it can uh, work in opposite direction okay so that's why too much homework should not be entertained it is said in this lesson excessive amounts of time spent on completing homework to complete the homework generally students uh, will be spending excessive amount of time they spend they are habituated to spend excessive uh, time to complete the excessive homework which is given to them so with this homework because of this excessive homework they take away uh, they can take away 
the kids social life this excessive homework excess amount of homework uh, uh, takes away the kids life socially they they it takes away the kids social life and they it kills the family time and it limits uh, their participation uh, in sports and other activities because as they have been busy very busy in attending excessive homework there they don't find the time they don't have the time to spend with their family members they don't find uh, to spend uh, to study the society they, they they lose their even social life also and they don't have the time to participate in sports and other activities because of this heavy homework so the amount of homework a, a, a teacher has to give to a student should be restricted so whatever it may be the homework which is uh, given by the teacher should be restricted uh, excessive amount of homework should be restricted a few homework only nominal homework uh, should only be given to the student that is uh, the meaning of this uh, paragraph here and here one more thing critically acclaimed author the famous author Tamim Ansari he reports that since 1981 the amount of homework given to an average sixth class child has increased by more than 50% average sixth class students homework has increased by more than 50% uh, uh, the homework has been uh, increased that's what uh, Tamim Ansari Uh, acclaimed other uh, reports 1981 onwards the homework has been increased and also many people claim that in the society the increase in homework dates as far back as 1957 increase of homework uh, dates exist the increase of homework exists 1957 onwards more and more and a new competition which has emerged served as an incentive for schools to try to increase the volume of the curriculum here there is a lot of competition uh, between uh, schools and all among schools many schools and all and it also led to increase the curriculum of the school and all so because of this the amount of homework increases with the increase in class so by and by according to the classes also the amount of the homework is uh, increased so these are the reports given by the experts and also generally we see that in the society here many teachers defend uh large amounts of homework they defend uh, many teachers defend large amounts of homework claiming that they also claim that it helps to prepare students for a world that is becoming increasingly competitive as today the world is becoming competitive here to face this competitive world giving excessive homework definitely is helpful to the students this is a uh, certain teachers uh, a few teachers opinion here actually certain teachers uh, defend large amount of homework is helpful to the student in this competitive world that's what uh, a few teachers uh, feel whether it is right or wrong that is another matter but majority of the teachers many teachers feel that they defend in their argument that excessive homework large amount of homework is helpful to the student in this competitive world to face this competitive world he has to do more and more homework this is a feeling of a, a few student a few teachers but however an expert dr kralovic the author of the end of homework he argues that do doing homework during high school has little or no effect on successful study skills of the students when they join college so the expert educational expert dr kalovic he has written a wonderful book the end of homework in that book he argues that doing homework during high school the homework uh, which was done by school uh, done by a student uh, at high school level it has no effect at all on successful study schools of student uh, when he join uh, when he joined in a college level education he says means not at all it's not at all helpful for the student at high school level whatever the homework that high school student uh, uh, does 
it's no way it is helpful to the uh, same student uh, uh, when he joined in a uh, college education he says simply he declares right so likewise excessive amounts of homework can be harmful to kids both physically and mentally here is a statement here excessive homework because of this excessive homework students will be disturbed mentally and physically it is very harmful to the students uh, kids particularly mentally and physically it is uh, harmful it is said a lot of homework usually means a lot of books to carry so when the lot of homework is given it is very simple that student uh, uh, has to carry a lot of uh, a load heavy loads of books and all likewise but 55% of the massachusetts it is an institution in the usa massachusetts children as per the survey by researchers of uh, simons college they carry loads heavier than 15% of their body weight which is a suggested limit actually for example for 100 100 kg a student is 100 kg is that he has to carry only 15% of his weight 15% of weight only he has to carry see that but generally see that but students uh, who are with the weight of 30 kg uh, even they are carrying we see nowadays they carry uh, 20 kg bags 15 to 20 kg uh, uh, books they are carrying what is this but it is suggested by the massachusetts institution in usa that only in his body weight uh, 15% of weight only a student has to carry uh, his books his luggage his bag this is a limited uh, weight which is supposed to uh, be carried by a student right but students are carrying large amounts of weight daily at a young age carrying a large amounts of uh, uh, luggage like this large amount of weight uh, daily in the form of bags and books like this at this young age it can do a lot of damage because bones are still in development stage at this time the children's uh, bones are uh, still at the uh, development stage when they carry heavy loads of bags and books like this so definitely this weight sir uh, uh, will uh, affect their uh, bone damage it leads to bones damage of uh, students also it is said the us consumer product safety commission it has reported that in 1999 more than 800 kids were treated in emergency wards for back pack related injuries that is in 1999 more than 800 kids 800 children were treated in emergency wards for what for back pack related injuries back pain neck pain uh, injuries likewise many things many of these injuries can lead to serious problems later in life of the students children particularly it may lead to chronic shoulder neck and back pain see these are the effects of uh, heavy loads of uh, books and baggage of uh, uh, children here the large amount of homework is causing kids in both high school and junior high school to be up until midnight or later so when the large amount of homework is given the students automatically children will be very busy uh, doing their homework late night late hours also uh, they will be working generally we see that without sleep without getting proper sleep also when extra curricular activities such as sports clubs extra added to the picture kids may even have to wake up early next morning to finish their homework to finish their homework if some extra curricular activities also there if they are busy with some extra curricular activities as they are existed in their curriculum here and again so uh, and also they are supposed to attend the large amounts of homework here so in such situations sir again the student has to wake up early in the morning to finish their homework so leaving them with an insufficient amount of sleep when the students have been very busy in attending their homework and all like this even they don't get proper sleep they don't uh, have the time to sleep uh, to get proper sleep also yes so in this case some parents and teachers argue that it would be beneficial to a child's academics to 
uh, limit after school activities. However, cutting the time of the few hours a week uh, teenagers use for exercise could be a factor in the growing obesity cases. Yes, this was the case here because even children don't have the time to attend sports and other activities. That's why simply sitting in a certain place, they will be very busy attending and doing their homework there because of this reason, as there is no uh, movement in their bodies, no, no ex uh, physical exercise for their bodies. So automatically that leads to obesity uh, in, uh, among uh, uh, children actually here. So they, they are growing obesity. Many obesity cases in the society are growing. So likewise, remember, many number of children who are overweight has doubled in the last two, two to three decades. So currently one child out of five is overweight in scientific observations. So many children are faced with more problems in school instead of learning, concentrating on their work. Many children are developing low esteem and even depression because of teasing. Because of teasings, uh, they face, uh, they are with the low esteem, no self-confidence for them and uh, even that leads to depression. Uh, to the students uh, will have a depression also because of this and the cases of obesity are growing most certainly due to lack of physical exercise because always they have been busy whenever you see that whenever you look at them they will be very very busy in doing homework there that's why no movement no body movements no physical exercise for them because of this as there is lack of physical exercise so automatically here children uh, that go, that leads to uh, obesity here so, with more and more homework being assigned, kids simply do not have enough time for proper amount of exercise. And when the large amount of homework is given, as the children will be very busy always in doing their homework here, so there will be no chance for them uh, to uh, do physical tasks like uh, exercise, to attend a physical exercise and also they don't find any time here. Okay, so likewise, even the homework also takes away the time that a kid could be spending with his or family. Even students uh, uh, don't find, children don't uh, have the time to spend uh, uh, with their uh, parents, with, with, with their uh, family uh, because of this excessive uh, homework here. Rather than spending time bonding and building strong family relationships, parents and children argue over homework. Generally, we find that in the society, parents and children argue about homework here and they don't have proper relationships also because as uh, Whenever uh, we see that, uh, children would be very busy with their uh, homework here. Where will be the time to uh, talk uh, openly and where will be the time to maintain uh, healthy human relations uh, uh, between uh, family and uh, uh, children here? So, time is taken away from important aspects of daily life. Certain important aspects will be there in our daily life. Time will be taken up. There will be no time at all for the children to attend uh, certain important life uh, uh, moments. This time is particularly precious in families with both the parents working. And sometimes with certain families, parents will be also very busy in attending their duties and in their working works likewise. But whereas children will be very busy in doing their homework here, parents will be very busy with their job chart. So where they would find the time to spend one to another, no time at all. So this leads to unhealthy human relationships in families. That is what uh, said here. Okay, so likewise, when assignments are given carelessly and frequently, it causes students to lose interest in the subject. Particularly when assignments in the name of homework are given carelessly and frequently here, it causes students uh, to lose interest in the subject. Even students uh, lose interest uh, in the subject also when the assignments are given excessive uh, homework, uh, in the name of excessive homework, assignments are given like this, even the students lose their interest in the subject also. And also negative results can also occur when a student is not able to complete uh, his or her homework. When the student is not able to complete his, her, his or her, her homework, generally that leads to negative results. This ne negative results uh, uh, will lead to another uh, uh, complications here. Many times, uh, they will, students will resort to copying the homework having others do their assignments and also uh, they will be cheating in tests also. So, but habits such as these are likely to, likely to haunt kids through their lives. When they, when they started uh, copying the homework 
from their uh, students here, from their friends and when they are attending assignments with the help of their friends copying and cheating these things are going on like the in their lives automatically uh, their lives they, they are uh, likely to haunt uh, these thing these sort of bad things are likely to haunt the kids through their lives also even have an adverse effect definitely these things will have an adverse effect in their on their moral judgment the students will almost always take the easy way when it comes to homework so that's why they should attend their homework in an easy way so that's why a less amount of homework is uh, uh, encouraged actually large amount of homework should not be entertained so the use of homework is effective when used by the rule what is the rule here less is more less is more so less homework should be given to the students overwhelming kids with loads of homework overwhelming here the meaning of overwhelming is here very great so this very great so overwhelming kids uh, with loads of homework can cause them stress and possible physical injury when the very great homework excessive homework is given to the students here that can cause them stress and possible physical injury also okay so homework takes away from the small amount of time kids get to spend with their parents and building uh, siblings because of this excessive homework uh, children don't find the time to spend with their siblings and uh, parents also that's why a limit on their a limit on their physical and social activities can also take a, a large toll on their lives a limit a limited uh, time on their physical and social activities it can also take a large toll on their lives a large toil in the sense here uh, unpleasant work okay so that's why it leads to unpleasant work excessive homework and uh, could hinder their health and the future relationships when their physical and when when their physical and uh, social activities are limited uh, automatically it leads to their uh, it could hinder it could uh, block uh, their health and uh, their future relationships also so that's why this is not to say that homework should be abolished this, this is not to say that homework should be abolished homework should be stopped but it should be limited meaning here homework should be there but it should be limited excessive large amounts of homework should not be entertained homework should should be given but in a little manner less less is more likewise here uh, it should be limited homework should be limited and the homework should also be creative and interesting so that the child enjoys it and also one more thing we should remember that homework should also be creative and interesting then only children uh, enjoy homework a lot right so this is what about uh, homework friends i hope you all understood well this lesson homework so thank you very much thank you one and all for listening my lesson so please go through the lesson later and once again thank you one and all and have a nice day